Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 11 of the Small Talk Podcast, the Smallville Rewatch Retrospective Podcast. I'm one third of your co host. My name is Ryan Cam. Thank you all so much for tuning in. We're going to be covering season two, episodes seven, eight, and nine. And I think this is the most consistent string of episodes we've gotten so far this season because all three of these episodes are really good and I cannot wait to jump in. But first, I have to introduce my co hosts. First and foremost, from 3D Movie Cinema, it's Jacob Collins. Jacob, how you doing? I'm doing really sexy. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Did you fire Chucky, I take it? Oh, well, that little bastard's back in a box because he upset me. <laughs> uh, fair enough. But uh, Matt Wyatt from your channel, Matt Wyatt, how you doing? I'm doing good. We got like two banger episodes with Lineage and Ryan which Ryan is my favorite and I can't wait to go into it. The, the dichotic was, was good. <laughs> Kiss ass. Oh, I wonder what your favorite episode is. Oh yeah. It's like, Oh yeah. My favorite says Ryan. You get it, Ryan? Cause my favorite episode's Ryan. Kiss Matt, ass. You're get, Matt, you're getting a raise. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, my that, least favorite that, episode well, that's, Ryan. well, that's how it's done. <laughs> Lineage and Ryan are both like, like borderline excellent and dichotic is not as good but you know like i said really consistent across the board and i think i think after last week where it was like one really good one and then two just kind of ones that are just kind of there and i think i'm being generous with that it was really refreshing to see so uh let us now get into season two episode seven called lineage and now the wb's new tuesday continues with smallville Next week on the WB's New Tuesday, it's an all-new Smallville. The day they always fought to keep hidden. He always said making a deal with the devil was going to come back to haunt us. The secret never told. Hello, Clark. We know each other? I'm your mother. The proof of his real identity. I want to find out everything about him. No chance we could be brothers? The moment they hoped would never come. She's petitioned Judge Ross to order a DNA test. An all-new Smallville. Next week on the WB's New Tuesday. A woman appears in Smallville claiming that Clark is her biological son by Lionel Luther, and she kidnaps Lex to force a confession from Lionel. Clark demands that his parents explain what role Lionel Luther played in his adoption. So yeah, this episode had some juicy drama going on here. Like everyone just playing a big old game of who's your daddy between Clark, <laughs> Lex, and Lana with the Harry Small character. I mean, just everyone just like just questioning everything like an, it's an episode of X-Files. But I think this is in the running for one of the best episodes in this whole season. Jacob, what say you? This episode, first off, I think it should have been called Who's Your Daddy? <laughs> because that would have made <laughs> Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? <laughs> oh, you think I, I actually when you said Who's Your Daddy? I always think of that stupid ass movie, The Master of Disguise. And where Vestagio goes, yeah, who's the, your daddy? Who's your daddy? Who's your who's daddy? Who's that daddy? Who's that daddy? Play clip. Insert clip here. Who's your daddy? 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 I mean, this whole episode is really good. Like, I love how it just starts out with and toast. And then just like, oh, it's one happy family. And then this woman, redheaded woman, just turns it all into shit. What say you, Jonathan? I mean, Matt. <laughs> Yeah, this is definitely a juicy drama, getting us into a little bit more of the context about the whole adoption scandal that Jonathan and Martha had done. We get more in the flashback, like post meteor shower, which I love that. And it was, yeah, and it was so like ballsy to see a woman dropped in into a uh, Clark school out of nowhere saying, hey, Clark, I'm your oh. mom. Dun, dun, dun. Even though we kind of know that we know that's not his mom, that is you birth mom. But, what, what, but wouldn't that be crazy if Clark did, still didn't know that he was still an alien? That would have been a little bit more believable for his point of view, but he already knows for a fact that that's not his birth mother. You think that's weird, Ryan? Or Matt, sorry. <laughs> you think that's weird? You think that's weird? She was in his barn, and this dude literally baked some toast and then went and did his chores in that barn and then sped off to school. Yet she did not see him speed like a freaking bullet. And also she didn't see, see him, you know, like he didn't see her like, who the hell are you? Like it would have made more sense if she just popped up in the barn. But instead she, after the Kents drove off of Clark, did a super speed chores that flew off. Again, they don't know their surroundings. 
Yeah. Nobody saw I get her. on repeat. That, repeat. That's just she crazy. Get in the How it was so. The but I thought the scene with him now. with Clark making toast out of, of his heat vision was a very subtling. It could have been so cheesy on the nose, but it definitely worked. It just felt like, hey, this is what Clark does in every day of his everyday life when no one was around. Also, nobody locks their doors at the camp farm. Like literally, all of them left. Yeah, it, anybody can waltz right in. Nobody's locking the door. She can like, walk in really? and stole all their shit. And then that, that, there's nothing they could have done about it. Because I'm 90% sure they don't have cameras. Yeah, it, it was that was the part of it where I was like, uh, it's an unfortunate precedent that if you that if you are on like the Kent farm or the Luther mansion, you can just like waltz right in there with no problem. Like seriously, one of the one of the Kents could have been in their truck and turned to say, who's this random ass woman in the yard? Like, have you met her? I haven't met her before, but you know, no, it's just a day ending in Y. All the cops arrest the Kents for jaywalking, apparently, and people can just walk in through their front doors with no rhyme or reason. But I wanted to, I wanted to point this out because it has no bearing on the plot, but I just saw this and laughed. Apparently Clark enjoys his toast with goober, that peanut butter and jelly in the same jar spread. I don't know if you guys caught that or not. No, but I didn't it, caught that. It just made me laugh, like seeing the goober, the, the spread, and I was just like, who actually eats that? <laughs> like, who, yeah, eats who the hell who the hell eats goober? Really? It was probably they had a sponsorship deal with them, so that's probably why they included it. Probably not and now we're from our sponsor. <laughs> goober. Smuckers. Goober. But, but but uh yeah. but I do wanna I would do wanna shout out the actress who played Rachel Dunleavy, the potential mother. Her name is Blair Brown. She played in she was in Space Cowboys with Clint Eastwood, Tommy Lee Jones, and all of them. She was in a very underrated sci-fi movie called Altered States. It's one of the freakiest movies you will ever see. It's from 1980. I recommend it highly. So she has been in quite a few sci-fi things. And I wasn't sure if I was in love with the character because it's well established that, I mean, Clark is the last son of Krypton. And when I first saw her and says, like, I'm your mom, Clark, I'm like, wait a minute. Did you survive the Kryptonian explosion too? Like, like I needed explanation. <laughs> yeah, when, yeah, when I first, yeah, when I first watched it, I was like, oh, wait, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How do you survive? Because she's going to say her name's Laura. Are we are we gonna throw it into that whole Elseworld story where the mother survives the, the explosion of Krypton and escaped? Which no, that no, that was total BS. Also, she got into that school without a visitor pass or behind the new principal's gate. Like literally, Bro. she just hopped over that gate. Bro, dude. anyone can waltz right into this fucking school gate, even when it's closed. The gates are locked, and they can still waltz right in with no visitors pass. I guess Principal Reynolds was on a break or something. <laughs> we were on a break. I'm just kidding. By the way, you never see that guy again. I forgot to mention you never. No, see you. Principal uh, yeah, Reynolds that's again. true. Yeah, you never see you never that, that see him again. again. Like it's just one episode. That's just color, gone. color me unsurprised. But uh, but yeah, like I said, it's just a big old guessing game. And then we later learn, like probably the biggest bombshell of the season so far, the whole thing with Clark's adoption. Lionel Luther had a very heavy hand in it, and we learn why. Jonathan hates the Luthers so much. It's because, well, as alluded to in the last episode with Lex talking about Pandora's box to Lana, Jonathan kind of opened Pandora's box of his own. In order to get a son, he basically let the Luthers into Smallville, and, well, we all know what happened there. That whole conversation in the barn was my favorite part of this whole episode, when Jonathan's explaining to him why, and just you could see the pain on his face because... The dude, all he wanted was just to be a dad. And when he got that opportunity, he was like, all right, it's cool. And then when you mess, like you get in with Lionel Luther, like, you know, there's going to be strings attached. And sure enough, there were. It's it, it's a it's a heartbreaking thing. And you can just tell that 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 John Schneider's is so good in this role because he is so good at conveying that. Yeah, I did the I did the right thing for the wrong reason, essentially. I help the Luthers get a foothold on this community. The smokestacks, the toxic dumping, all the people who were cheated, including Pete's family. None of that would have happened if it weren't for me. Dad, you, why didn't you tell me? Because I knew that you would do exactly what you're doing right now, which is blame yourself. You're trying to protect me. It is my fault. No. You never believe that. 
This was my decision. This is my fault. I want you to get this fuck where he breathes. I want you to find this Nancy boy, Elliot Ness. I want him dead. I want his family dead. I want his house burnt to the ground. I want to go to the middle of the night. I want to piss on his ass. Kents were, but the Kents were very desperate to adopt him, and they didn't know what else yeah. to do because mm -hmm. they couldn't come up with any cover story. So Jonathan basically just sold his soul to the devil. By giving, by talking into the Ross family, by letting the the Luthers uh, um, steal their cream corn factory of their business, so they can dump a bunch of stuff that uh, chemical oils or studying meteorite that's been hitting in the town now. I mean, even though they definitely had been doing, were about to do it before the meteor shower was about to come to the play. Yeah, speaking of that meteor scene, that scene was wild. Like seeing the aftermath of it and seeing younger Lionel, younger John Glover, and seeing baby lex with his freshly shaven hair and clark with that big old frankenstein looking do i was just like this is wild but i kind of love he's supposed it. to be like he's supposed to be like 10 for lex luther yeah I, th I believe or eight or i mean it's hard to know tell his age but these are the same actors from the pilot so they weren't because this was like a year after they shot the pilot so it made sense for them to keep them on for the flashback sequences yeah, it was a good it was a good scene. And and I love the part where Lionel's like that thing in your back trunk is slowing us down. And like, you have no idea what that thing truly is. Lionel, it's a spaceship. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. He's like, what the hell is that back there? <laughs> Didn't bother to look. <laughs> and being like corn, but a ton, ton, ton of corn. I mean, we are ton the of, corn ton of hay. Of the world, Mr. Luther. I mean, come on. I mean, total hay. <laughs> oh, hey, that. Hey, it could have been some hay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know what I really liked about that scene, though? I really liked that, um, like, um, I really liked that, you know, that, that was, like, everybody always thinks Clex, uh, Lex and Clark's first me meeting was the, you know, <laughs> I said Clex. <laughs> Clex, Clark. And, you it, should call them that. Clex. Clex. That's what Lionel <laughs> Michael Roseman calls them, Clex. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the first the first time we see Clark Lex the Dam, but no, that's the first time we see them. And I like how he does this, like you know, he just does this, and you yeah, know, he was just a harmless, like friendly little child while yeah. Lex is on conscience. So yeah, this is literally the first time they met in person without how, them remembering. How awful does my, uh, John Glover's wig look in the cornfield scene? Like you could tell he's wearing a toupee because I'm looking like that is a freaking wig if I've ever seen one in my life. It didn't. What well, the wig didn't look that bad. It, it looked. A, it looked a little bit more. Cornfield. Every every other scene with the wig on looks perfect, but the scene when he's in the cornfield where it's like the wind's blowing it this way, and I'm like, that yeah. looks like a toupee. <laughs> ah, the ah, the wind. Thou art a heartless bitch. But uh, I mean, like, I mean, they couldn't, they couldn't even have him have his hair cut because they wanted to have the long hair in the present day time. He had a shorter hair in the pilot with a natural hair and with no, with not a wig on it. What did you all think of the Lana stuff with her trying to find her dad and find it, finding his, finding her dad, and him starting out to be kind of a jerk? I, I didn't care for him at first, and it was a nice resolution, but it's. Like when it was like, oh, you're just a guy who hates the Luthers. Like literally everybody else in this freaking town. Him and Jonathan should have beer together because they could probably pe pick each other's brains. Dude, they would get along just great because Pretty they much. both had something in common. They both hate the Luthers. And and she caught him at the very bad time on the phone when he was yelling at this, some guy on the phone. You literally just dropped the ball like, hey, I, I'm your daughter. And what do you expect him to react in that situation? I mean, Lana, it's a lot read to the take room. In. Read the room, Lana. That's not a good time. Just say, hey, and you turn around when he say like he broke the phone, like you turn around and walk out of here. And or say, Hey, look, I was coming here, but can we have coffee sometime? I want to tell you something really important. Before you break the news and drop the ball on him, instead of just like, oh, it felt like you were just walking into an ambush. You know, like you can hint, but wait. That's what I would have said. Right. Yeah, you know, like I said, read the room. And really this whole episode, because of the drama, just you see not only see you see a bit of a resurgence of Dick Clark, but you also get like a little bit of Dick Chloe and a little bit of Dick Lana too, because <laughs> Chloe basically like like spills the beans on the whole adoption thing and gets this ball rolling and Clark just kind of tees off on her. I'm like, yeah, I get it, but also at the same time. You didn't have to be so harsh. I'm not giving you an exclusive on my life. You're not even curious that she might be your biological mom? Why are you so obsessed about my mother? Do I ask you questions about yours? No, I guess not. Yeah, that's because she hasn't shown her face here in years. If you want to find somebody's mother, find your own. I know where she is, Clark. The difference is she's not interested in me. Asshole. 
like like yeah. like like poor chloe she's off like crying and stuff and i'm just like this kind well, of sucks. well i to be fair i mean she was kind of priding into his private life when he never asked for it in the first place and she's just like i'm gonna do it i'm gonna look into it like what are you doing they, they had the same conversation in season one if i know like, apparently, she like, didn't, apparently she apparently did, she did not remember what the hell happened last time when she tries to pry into his, it, her, his private life is it just me or do we do i feel like remember that same episode where lice gets kidnapped by the guy the the one who look the lookalike bot guy you know what i'm talking about uh, at the nightclub yeah 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 I mean, the, gets, the yeah previous, that one he gets the zero club zero didn't episode? it feel like this is they retreaded two freaking plot points in this episode Lex getting kidnapped, and then on top of that, Chloe and Clark having problems about his family lineage again. I'm like, yeah. why are they retreading the same shit? Like, we literally, the, and the well, sad guess, thing is, it's written well, by the they just want to force too. the drama. They got to force the drama <laughs> for this for the writers. They got to force that shit in there. It's like, come on, Chloe, mind your business. I, I did like that Jonathan helped Lionel. And then Lionel, and then Lionel ended up screwing Jonathan over. And that's kind of like how, because the last time they saw each other, but you know, was like you know during this media show. I'm like the first time we see them together is when Lexus, you know, the hostage situation. Yeah, the, the Jitters episode. Jitters. It was the Jitters episode. Yeah, and that's so, the first time in a long time that they've seen each other. Yeah, during that so time. Then, yeah, and so he helped them, you know, and I'm sure, like you know, like he Lionel is aware somewhat of like, okay, there's something off about the Kent boy because why, why would the Kent boy, you know, like I had to force his adoption. You know, so I'm sure Lionel Luther has probably had him investigated or something too. Except, I mean, like I saw him just figuring just by looking at this because Lionel is not stupid. Lionel's no. not stupid, not at all. Like Lionel, even with him being blind, he could still like you know. And I also like that Lionel like threatened that woman. Basically, like he basically told her like maybe you need to go back because like literally he seduced her, let her on again, and saying. Maybe you need to go back to the middle hospital. <laughs> like, wow, what a dick. In a seduction, in a seduction scene. <laughs> like, you literally just led her on to, yeah, you... to kidnapping Lex. If you need help, I'd be happy to call Dr. Freiburg. I'm sure he'd be more than willing to make room for you at the clinic. You provoked at her. Because and she, she's, and like... she's out of desperation to find her, her son, Lucas Luther. Because then he forged the documents on Lucas Luther onto the Kent family, which that was not Clark the whole time. That was not Lucas. Like, that's not his son. Her son, I mean. I thought that was an interesting development, though. And I know the answer to the question of, you know, you can neither confirm nor deny any existence without the secretary's approval. But I uh, I, I was wondering to myself, they couldn't bring this up unless it was going to bring it was going to be coming around somewhat with that last shot of Lionel like feeling around the locket and a lock of someone's hair and then you see the picture and it's not Lex like in that photo it's someone else I'm like oh okay. yeah apparently I'll... Lionel lied about Lucas being dead because that's a child of Lucas having a photo with Lionel and that's also... the lock and that's the hair of Lucas <laughs> also, did you see the flashback scene with Sheriff Ethan how he had a wig on like he looks exactly oh. the same but with a wig on it, it reminded me of the Steve Buscemi thing from where they put a hat on I'm like hey dudes what up <laughs> splice that clip in it's future. so it's so how do you do fellow kids so it's so typical to see a lot of these uh, actors <laughs> who, are see, who are bald who are bald but then you see in the flashback they have a fucking hair back then and they lost hair but it was so wig it's so typical Matt, like, you ever see saw six or I've Saul seen all. I did watch all of them. I had well, a chance a to watch all of them. Well, there's a scene where Jigsaw puts a hat to make him look here, put a hat on backwards. I know. It's like <laughs> he, he looks like a, he's wearing street clothes, like he's a 15 year old kid. <laughs> you look like, like a fucking punk kid. <laughs> just because you put a hat on backwards does not make you young. I'm sorry. That ain't gonna hey. make you young. You're not gonna convince us that you're young, bro. <laughs> Get the fuck yeah, just, out of here. Uh, also, Lex getting kidnapped again. This is an issue I had again. Lex getting kidnapped again and not screaming. Literally, a woman, which I will say, the scene leading up to him getting kidnapped with Lionel and everything. And then, like, I like how Lex is like hauling ass in his car. And then the woman's right there. She's just like right there. And then she he stops her at the, in the car, and she's just looking like, I'm even though I would look at that and go, that bitch is crazy because. Uh, you stopped your car. She's right in the middle of your car, and she's looking at you like this, like, like, and then she's walking up to you. I'm like, 
Dude, she's got to either shoot you. She's got that crazy bitch face on her. The drive off. (laughs) Idiot. She literally literally looks like she's been corrupted by that virus from that movie Smile. Like from last year, the horror movie. And I'm like, like, you see that smile. You need to run away. Use your common sense. Alex did this instead. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah. And then instead, just like, help, like, oh, 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 security, security, security. He, he didn't like, call for help. Like, he would, I, I would have been just like, carried a gun on him. Oh, you should have carried, you should have carried a no. nine millimeter on him. Police, like, hey, get the help. fuck away. Help! Help! Police! Help! Something, anything besides, whoa, 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 whoa. Drive off. She's got a needle. Get the fuck off. What is this needle of mysterious liquid coming towards my neck? Like, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, Lace could have not drove off or something. Like, you're of in course. a car. He didn't even drive off. I will defend the other one where he gets tasered into a van better than this one because at least that's more he, believable. That's, at least instead of this stupid shit. Because he was the yeah, edge of his car. He could have gone, oh shit. That's what I would do. Oh shit. <laughs> it's oh, somehow, oh my it's God. somehow easier to believe. Oh, that. Thank God. <laughs> It's somehow easier to believe that Lex got shoryukened into a van and no one can question it. And yet this is somehow oh, like less. Oh, me. God. It's one of those. It's one of those times where we had to let shit go and let this plot f- move further with sure. this kidnapping scenario. I did like, though, that Lex got kidnapped. I did like him getting kidnapped, though, and that she's basically like, tells Lyon, I'm going to kill your son if you don't do real about about the affair and tell that I wasn't crazy and you if he doesn't t- if he doesn't go on go into the press and then he does to tell the crazy. whole world about this shit and he just he's like crazy. go and he he's basically Lionel just basically said go fuck yourself I will hunt you down if you try to hurt my son you just basically killed him if it hadn't for Clark to come to the rescue he would have been fucking axe murdered <laughs> yes, he would have been done of, speaking of see? that final act clearly like this director has seen misery more than once no my father just killed you Lex oh because there's definitely some misery that's what i was thinking too she went all misery on his ass Get kathy bates on his ass like <laughs> exactly that's the one but didn't it seem which, crazy which, which i gotta see which i gotta watch that movie i still have not seen misery but i've heard I've of it that. but i still need to watch that film. didn't it seem crazy no. So good. This isn't crazy that Lionel fucked him over again. It's the second time. Jitters and this. Where Lionel, like, he's like, oh my God, my dad fucked me over the second time. I, I, I would be like, you asshole, I've been helping your ass out. You being blind and shit. And instead you're playing gambling with my life again. Like, he's getting, like, I, he was like, I knew you were a survivor. Dude, he would not have survived on his own if it were for Clark coming to the rescue. He would have been fucked. <laughs> well, in the, uh, in the words of George W. Bush, fool me once. Fool me, can't get fooled again. <laughs> he's says, Your father failed you, Lex. That's, he's like, whoa, shit. Like he's going to get hit with an axe. Like, oh, oh. <laughs> when he's seen that press, he went back in that video, I was like, oh, fuck, my dad killed me. Like, like, he was like, oh, fuck. Like, he even heard, like, oh, shit. Let, why would you do that, dad? You asshole. Like, he was just more like, oh, shit. Like, that was like, you know, he, he just dropped the He would have been like Chris Farley bottom. from Wayne's World, too. I hate my father. I hate my life. But I feel great, man. <laughs> also, also, did you see, though, like, close him? I loved how him and uh, Pete snuck into a lab to steal the DNA. And then he got, like, they talked about us on Talk Bill. It made me laugh so hard when Michael Rosen on the says, not this should have been a scene where they go, uh, not only is Clark not your son, he's also African American as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, that's a little bit suspicious. I mean, I'm no expert on the how the <laughs> DNA works, but no, I wouldn't that that was a little bit of a too far fetch. <laughs> and also, there's no security cameras when they broke into that place. Clark, I can believe that stuck in there, but Pete. Yeah, but you're you're with Pete. Like you're having him as an accomplice to break in. To steal a DNA sample. Also, uh, it would have been really, really funny if, like, they would have said, "All right, um, he is related to uh, Pete's. Uh, what was Pete's last name? Ross. Pete Ross. The Rosses. The he's Rosses. To the Rosses. He's the he's the judges. He's the judges' son. That is his real mother. And he's like, really? He goes, yep. Apparently, him. And I was like, and then he's like, and then the mom's like, I I I, I can't explain this. <laughs> That would have been really like a big. He's like, but it, Pete's like, yeah, but by the moment, but by the yeah, but by the moment that the 
by the time that woman just fucking axed Clark when he jumps right in front of it, he's like, who the hell? Who are you? Just in shock. Like, there's no way that he can possibly do that. Now she knows for sure that that's not his again. That's not her kid. She did not notice him doing chores. She did not notice him doing super speed chores in the beginning of the episode. It took her until him jumping in front of an axe to realize there's something off with this dude. This dude's not really my uh, Lucas. And I think, like, she's like, I'm just crazy. She just admits, like, well, I'm crazy. I'm guessing I'm going back to the mental asylum. I'm like, yeah, but now she went back to the mental asylum. And like, it, it, just like Martha said, she may say something about what Clark did, but no one's going to believe her because she's a total loon. Also, did you see hear the song that Lex was listening to? Oh, I don't know. I can't remember what, what song it was. Like, he was it, listening. It was like getting in this car, speeding off. And then when she's right there, I like that song. I feel like the song worked with that scene. I forget what song it is, but I was like, that's a great song. Yeah, you know, I'll, um, I'll find it. I'll find it. By the way, that was so stupid the way Lex. I hate Lex's shades. Every time I see him in shades, I'm like, dude, stop wearing shades. Okay. It's freaking. That was, that was the he style. Por- he, like, he has a poor choice of picking shades, bro. That was just <laughs> the style of the time. Those, those were the. Like when The Rock was in like the WWE from like that first part of 2003, he wore those exact same sunglasses. So it was just the style of the time. I'm not. Defending. Doesn't matter what you think. <laughs> Lex, Lex. Uh, yeah, but Lex. Uh, then, of course, we don't see him with the shades afterwards. <laughs> it would be funny if he woke up with the shades still on him. And it's like all crooked. He's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Just like that would have been funny. He would have been like, huh? And then she'd have been like, she took the shades and smashed them. Then I would have been like, all right, that's that's how it's done. Those but were five hundred dollars yeah. sunglasses, asshole. <laughs> like but, some Mortal uh, Kombat reference. <laughs> Mortal Kombat. Well, um, I think with that in mind, I think we covered just about everything. All I will say is, uh, someone get Maury Povich on the phone. But uh, Jacob, uh... <laughs> you are not the father. And then Jonathan goes, oh, we're... you are not. <laughs> Final goes, oh, oh my God. Oh my God, Ryan. Yeah, you he's, have she's, to. You'll be you on a Maury episode. You are not the father. Ryan, insert that clip. You have to. And then just put <laughs> Photoshop Ryan's, uh, Photoshop Jonathan and, and Lionel's face. Like a woman crying. And then they got two guys jumping up and down. You have to find a clip like that. And then just insert them. Like Jonathan and Mar- and Lionel's head going, oh. I, like, I will. Um, I can I- just I can just imagine. See, like, come on. Can you imagine them getting on the Maury show? Finding like, oh, yeah, you are not the father. You are not the father. But uh, <laughs> let's uh, let, let's go to rank. Let's go to rankings now. Jacob, one to ten shields. What you got? I would say this is a really good episode. I would say eight out of ten. All right, uh, Matt. What about you? I'm giving this thing the nine. This is actually a damn good episode. We get more in the context about Jonathan and the, the and why does he hate the Luther so much? Why he doesn't fully trust them, especially Lex. Then we get more of the, the whole adoption scandal. Now that it's been carrying, Jonathan's been carrying on that guilt for so long, and he did not want to say anything to Clark because he knows that he's going to blame him, um, blame himself. Because if it weren't for his arrival, none of this would have happened. They wouldn't, the town wouldn't have been as screwed as they were now. And it was like, no, don't blame yourself. This was on me. That was my decision, my own. And that's the guilt that I had to live with. I'm going to go nine and a half. I really enjoyed this episode quite a bit. Uh, I think it's my favorite of the season so far, or it's at least in the conversation. I know the first, the premiere was really good. And uh, and this next episode is definitely in the conversation as well. It's a dog race between like three or four. But, Yo, okay, uh, Jacob, you're dying already. <laughs> He's done. I'm He's just out laughing. of it. <laughs> I just thought of the boy Pulver show. I'm just laughing. At that I mean, time. how could you not get that out of your head? Like, is now that you brought the Mori topic? Uh, fuck now. I'm <laughs> That's just the thing. at that because just imagine, and then they're like, also Jonathan, you are not the father. And then like Lionel's going, oh. Well, <laughs> well, my Photoshop is shoddy at best, but I will try and make something work for you guys. For you, Jacob Collins, don't off. say I don't do anything for you. But uh, I was laughing my ass off just thinking about that. By the way, just laughing my ass thinking that would be a freaking hilarious episode of Maury. 
<laughs> just laugh and one part two people cry. <laughs> well, um, on that note, let's move on to our next episode, season two, episode eight, called Ryan. No, I am not in this one. On the WP's new Tuesday. You gotta get me out of here. Ryan! A call for help. I've never heard him so scared. A friend he cannot fail. If something happened to him, I never forgive myself. Now, for the first time, despite all his powers... How did you manage to get him out without anybody stopping you? Your life is going under the microscope. A hero is powerless. I'm dying, Clark. An all-new Smallville. Clark <laughs> rescues mind-reading Ryan, James, from a research hospital that treats him like a lab rat. Yeah, that's putting it mildly. Ryan's guardian doctor sues to get Ryan back, and Clark learns that Ryan has a brain tumor that needs treatment. This episode ripped out my heart and kind of stomped on it. it Not was... to cut you off, Ryan, but I've, I I could have sworn you said Dr. Seuss. Like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Like, Seuss. Dr. Seuss is in this episode? He fucked Ryan, Ryan over? A, Ryan is in a container. That is in a straight. Like, what is it? I'm trying to do Ryan? Don't try to do Dr. Sue. But but Ryan is being serious. I really mean this. Any, any who. um, This is, like I said, ripped out my heart, kind of stomped on it, but in the best way possible. I want to shout out Matt for sending me the uh, Michael Rosenbaum's Inside of You podcast where Ryan Kelly, the, the, the actor who plays Ryan James, uh, he sent that episode to me, and I have been watching it. it is quite good. Ryan Ryan James, or, or, or excuse me, Ryan Kelly comes from a family with thirteen siblings. I oh. cannot imagine that. Yeah, I can't imagine. Like he has so many siblings, and he doesn't know any of their birthdays. <laughs> I got, got six brothers, and I got six, I got six uh, family members. I got. So, I mean, I don't know. I only know, I got, I know at least eight of their, I know at least part, mostly of their birthdays. I mean, uh, let's be fair. We don't always remember our family's two birthdays. I still don't even remember my sisters. parents' birthday for crying out loud. Uh, I actually, I know, I know my, I don't know the date, the year, but I know like the day they were born. So, I mean, that's crazy. But, uh, but anyway, uh, this was, this is a, a really emotional episode and it was really strong but uh, jay what did you think i like this episode i think honestly and this is i know i'm gonna get shit for this but i like lineage more but i really think it's a good episode you know which i like seeing ryan you know i think ryan's a great guy um he's definitely better than ryan cam um so you know just... <laughs> 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 then i like the opening where he tries to trick the doctor and says what is this and he goes He's stealing it, and then he goes, "That's like, son, like, like this has happened before, or something." Like, he goes, "That son of a bitch!" And then he runs <laughs> in there, like, in front of him. I'm like, "Why wouldn't you get security? Like, you're in a lab." Like, he goes, "That motherfucker!" Like, you know, just like he's just so angry. That, like, this has happened before, or something. Like, like you could have, sus- you could have, you could not suspect that he's trying to trick you. Instead, it's like that son of a bitch, and then he just runs away, like. The- and I'm just like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm getting this. He goes, oh, I tricked. I'm like, that son of a bitch. Ah. It's in like, the words, in the words, he's like shame. Words. He's like shame McMahon for fucking WWE. He's like, where's that son of a bitch? Come on, come on, get that. Oh. So take me to him. Take me to the son of a bitch. Take me to him. Come on, go, 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 go. You think that's bad? His acting. There's that one scene where his acting where he threatens Clark. That even gets more stupid. That was that was so overacted when he was threatening Clark at the Kent farm. When he <laughs> yeah, it was. I don't know how you got him out of Summerhold, but if he's not here by 9 a.m., federal marshals will be crawling all over this place, and your life is going under the microscope. It was not great. Uh, he, he looked, in, in, the actor still looks creepy as fuck, especially the last guy that Ryan had his, his um, stepdad. He kind of last like, season. He kind of looks like synops- off brand, non union, legally distinct Kevin Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> what is the synopsis, Ryan, for the plot? I had finished it, but uh, I'll read it again. Clark rescues mind reading Ryan James from a research hospital that treats him like a lab rat. Ryan's guardian doctor sues to get Ryan back, and Clark learns that Ryan has a brain tumor that needs treatment. What's the doctor's name again? 
<laughs> Dr. Garner, I believe. Uh, Dr. Gar it's supposed to be Dr. Garner. <laughs> not <laughing>? Seuss. <laughs> you said Dr. Seuss, and we're like, wait, what? I was like, what the fuck? He said it again. Dr. Seuss. <laughs> what is it with you? Are you going said, to a Dr. Seuss convention? You've been reading Dr. Seuss? Doctor. <laughs> oh, come guys. It, you been I reading Dr. Seuss? I think today, Ryan's been I think Cam's been reading too much Dr. Seuss books lately and the Dr. Seuss is just Kim, comes to his brain. Well, I I do work in a library and there are a lot of Dr. Seuss books in the kids section, so maybe that has something to do with it. But uh it's going to hop on pop later. And stop by the lore. Horton here. So, uh, so uh, yeah, let's be glad no one named Horton is in this book cuz then he'd hear a who. <laughs> But uh, everybody, <laughs> I was waiting for you to literally, I, you, I literally, Ryan was waiting for you to say, "Don't be such a Grinch who stole Christmas." <laughs> I was waiting for you to say that. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I can't come up with something. But uh, but any, anyway, um, yeah, uh, we we get Ryan for back for another episode. He was my favorite guest character last season. It was nice to see him back here. Uh, so he's dying in this episode, and that's I did not expect to see that one coming. Like when I first heard it, I was like, okay, uh, that was kind of sudden. But I mean, it was it, it kind of made me sad, Matt. It really did, dude. This episode broke me. Like I agree with you that Ryan was my favorite guest star in the la in the last season, and for him to come back for one last episode for his appearance, it really just took me on an emotional roller coaster ride. Especially finding out that yeah, he's been having so many headaches. Then we find out that oh, guess what? He has a tumor and he doesn't have that long to live. And his performance in the hospital bed, he broke down crying. He already knew what what was wrong with him before he was diagnosed. Promise me you'll keep an eye on him after I'm gone. Don't talk like that, all right? You're not going anywhere. Mark. Look, you just don't give up hope, Ryan. There's more doctors we can see. Mark, you're not listening to me. The doctor said you bought me a few extra days. Because Dr. Garner knew, knew about his uh, condition. Oh, uh, well, Ryan Callen's performance is so outstanding. So, like, so it's so good. believable. And I, I, like, I can't make joke about that. It, it's just too much. I do like that he brought on the Lex, the first person he brought. He broke out in the lab when they were denying it. Then the first person he brought to his Lex, and Lex just berates Clark, saying, "Yeah, kidnapping does have that effect on people." Like Lex just literally lets into Clark, saying, "Like you kidnapped him." And yeah, you kidnapped like, a minor. And Clark's like, "I'll take us somewhere else." Like, no, don't do that. I can't see more. Like Clark, you're just like Clark's like, "I'm gonna stop him. Like I'm gonna protect him." And then on top of it, he goes home, and rather than lie his ass off, I would lie and say, "I don't know where he is." You know, I don't know you what the hell you're talking. You told I have me no you idea what the him. hell you're talking about. Nobody saw me. Which, why, by the way, why would nobody see Clark kidnap Ryan? Yeah, Super no one saw him. Also, and then like he, the guy just grills Clark. Goes, I'm gonna get U.S. Marshals here to search the farm. But you also, I me? think that Doctor Goddard Ryan knew goes. that that was Clark because earlier he came in the lab trying to search for Ryan, and for the, and conveniently he broke him out. So he, that's why it, the first thing he'll come is his Ken farm. And and that scene really bothered me when he was like, "Oh, don't worry, I'll bring him back. To, give me tomorrow to bring him back here." I was like, "Michael Rosenbaum, no, you give me Ryan right <laughs> now, you asshole." Yeah, it's like, why would you say that? It's like, uh, it's like, no, yeah, I'll give you, shit. I'll give yeah, you till tomorrow. Now like, we will wait. No, that that would not fly. That that would not fly. They would not give you a day to to bring over that you kidnapped. Oh, especially the guys grilling Clark, going. <laughs> Yeah, if he's not he back here by here 9 a.m., blah, blah, blah. I was like, dude, that was so like, like overacted. What really? is that? Like, One of those... if you like some salt and pepper for your scenery, it's like makes me want to punch him in the face right now. He just he's so punchable, you know <laughs> what? Not... Yeah, we will be back here tomorrow. And guess tomorrow. what? We're gonna take your cows, we're gonna search your farm. We're gonna, I'm like, dude, what are you like? Are you one of those, like, you know, after school special villains? Like, you know, those bullies from after school specials? Like, I mean, seriously. The like, villains from Captain Planet were more subtle than this guy. <laughs> Captain Planet is exactly. a super underrated cartoon, by the way. Captain but, uh, Planet, he's, he's a, a hero. hero. I mean, I, I, I mean, I don't really remember like snippets of that show. I, I remember watching it when I got up for school in the morning, like you know, and then just had a fucking pig face villain. Y'all ever see, by the way, that Don Cheadle? Uh, yeah, I did. I saw that. Sketch? Yes, 
He's not turning everybody into a tree. Uh, but yeah, I, I will say, I just think that, you know, I like that. Like they're there, they show up in the next morning and then Lex just drives up with his shitty fucking shades on. Chef, before you do anything, take a look at this. And then it's like, I mean, what what, what would have happened if Lex had not shown up? Because Clark was ready to go go to town on these people that they were about to take Ryan. I guess away I'm about to him. kill somebody. All right, watch this. Because oh, he was because he was just like standing right in front of him to make sure that he doesn't take him. Clark was a Clark was about to go. I'm about to end this man's whole career, and then Lex conveniently shows up in in his terrible sunglasses. But also, you were yeah. Even though you were his legal guardian, but you were using him as a lab rat, and you totally denied that he was even with you in that facility. I mean, th- does that strike you a little bit of a red flag? And suddenly, you just let him wanting to take Ryan, even though that he's his legal technically his legal guardian. Also, did this? I, I like this, but also, did it feel weird? Like, cause like. Lex is part a part of the Clark plot, but he also has his own thing going on. Like he's dealing with the cigarette smoking man from the X Files, and like this guy, because the guy is running for like mayor or governor or something. Oh and, yeah, because he was so, dumping because he was dumping oil in, in the town. He was a very corrupt politician. He he know he's on um, like friends with Lionel Luther, and he's yep. threatened to expo- and Lex is threatened to expose him. I love how Lex just like he threatens places. And then, like, he smirks and says, don't you smirk at me. And then, like, don't you laugh at me. Don't you laugh at me. Like, that was, according to, and according to, like, Michael Rosebaum, like, that line was solely improvised. It's like, hey, I'm trying to act here. Don't be funny. Don't try to laugh. (laughs) And also, I love how Lex just gives that line about uh, Winston Churchill. I'm like, that was so, like, a Lex thing. I'm like, that was so good. Like, that right there is A plus acting, writing. Like, that, to me, when he was talking about Winston Churchill, like, he basically put that guy in his place. Like, that guy thought he was putting Lex in his place. Lex put him in his place, Cohen. When Winston Churchill heard about the attack on Pearl Harbor, he broke out a bottle of champagne and said, we've won the war. America's Pacific fleet was wiped out. France was overrun. And the Luftwaffe was bombing London. Churchill said America is like a giant boiler. Light a fire under it, and there's no limit to the amount of heat it can generate. If you start a fire, Mayor Tate, you better be prepared to deal with the flames. He's over like, the- to this day, you're my bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah pretty much. Over these past hurt. couple of over these past couple of episodes, we've been seeing Lex slowly move towards the Lex Luthor that is like more commonly known. I mean, the company's now known as LexCorp. We saw that in the last episode, and he's dropping winston churchill quotes like that which he has done before so the pieces of the lex luther puzzle as we know it are on the table they're just not arranged properly yet did you also catch will. did you also I, don't, catch... I don't remember that that they have the lex corp logo yet that doesn't happen yet yeah, it's still called luther corp it's, called, it's still called luther corp he just his company is called lex corp you yeah. know like because he has member at the he bought it out like a, that the plant so he owns the plant solely but lionel still owns luther corp He's still in enti- Lionel's still entitled to it. Yeah. Lex oh, is just okay. running. Lex is just running like ru- Lex is running both businesses right now. But, I got but, but he was, but now uh, Lionel's taking it back over because, you know, Lionel's taking it back over because, you know, uh, Lionel's like, I got Martha now helping me. So I'm taking my business back over. I'm fine because, you know, Lex, because that's what Lex was doing. Remember when we first started the season, season two? Lex was t- overseeing Lex Corp and Luther Corp, but then he was making bad investments. And so Lionel then basically got back, even though being blind, he got back in this game. And Lex is now just focusing on Lex Corp. Yeah, now that Lionel's back in the game because because um because Martha Kent is now his assistant, her eyes and ears, yeah. his eyes and ears and stuff. Yeah. I will say I did like that Lex <laughs> showing uh Ryan the the, the Viticus and how the foreshadowing of warrior angel and Leviticus, oh, how they started yeah. out as friends and became ally enemies. And I'm like, that to me is like, so on the nose. Like to me, it's like, even God's going, do you get it? Do you get it? But it was a good foreshadowing because I think Ryan now is suspect starting to piece it together. That Lex is the, the Vilicus, Clark is the warrior angel. Yeah. And the, the scene where he tells Ryan, like, Hey, yeah, we see the world in black and white, but sometimes you got to get your hands dirty and be compromised. It, it, and compromise and stuff and ryan's like yeah but that doesn't make it right you like your father told you that but it doesn't make it right like wow that was a, a good line by ryan himself she's 
Sometimes you have to get your hands dirty, make compromises. That's what your father told you. That doesn't mean it's right. I do, I, I do like that Clark trying to save Ryan, but I will say this made me laugh. I don't know if you you guys got this. This was so stupid that when Clark started to super speed, I thought that was cool. But then you see him super speed, especially on the side of his shoulder. When I'm going, it just reminded me of Sheldon from the Big Bang Theory when he's in the Flash costume. Going zoom, zoom, zoom. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that show got it from Smallville because this was before the Big Bang Theory, and and I love that sequences of Clark running at super speed. We get a little bit more of him using his powers. Which was pretty dope. In fact, to watch at it that time, it was fun. It, it was certain moments, like when he's like, you see his face, it was good. But when you're shooting him on the side of him doing that, he just oh laughing. yeah, 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 yeah. When he was on like, the, it was reminded me of the Sheldon from the Big Bang Theory. That's what it reminded me. I was laughing at that, but I'm yeah. like, it was good until we got to that part. Then I'm like, okay, whoever thought of that was stupid. Okay, I'm like, come on, we got we got the first person perspective. And we got Clark's perspective. We do not need the side perspective because we get it. Okay, he's traveling really, really fast. But I do like that, you know, Clark. I do like that Clark super speeded there. And then of course he could not save everyone. Like I like the idea oh, that Ryan yeah, yeah. dies. It's like it shows it's almost like the Christopher Reeve film. You cannot save everyone. You know, that's exactly what it was. That that was a little yeah. bit more of a callback to the Christopher Reeve Superman. Like like the line that he was given in that in the first Superman movie when he was at his, his father's grave and his funeral was like, Hey, like all the things I could do, all those powers, and I couldn't even save him. Like that was such an emotional impact, especially in this episode. He even though he can do all the things. <laughs> That he can do to save people, but he can't save people from illness, from cancer, tumor, whatever. Also, um, also, Jacob pointed this out to me. I love the transition where it goes to ad break, where like Ryan has the nosebleed and it falls on the Warrior Angel comic, and then it transitions the mask like part onto Clark's face. I don't know if you all caught that. Oh, I will no, I, no, I caught that. Oh yeah, I've caught that because but that was I'm... a little bit. But that was a little bit of the transition shot that, like I said before like the way ryan sees him he's warrior angel for pretty much and i guess and it's i guess it was never it was never fully stated but is like ryan officially dead like is he dead yeah yeah show? yeah after after the whole balloon sequences they saw that they, they got all of his belongings that means yeah he died off screen which uh -huh. the balloon scene to me was the best part of the episode it shows you that it for the moment, even though he's not Superman yet, he got to be Superman for the moment. And Ryan's telling him, like, hey, don't blame yourself. Don't be mad about what's happening. And you changed my life, and you're going to change people's lives. That is a little bit of a foreshadowing of what Clark Kent will become one day. I and that love. was, and, and that scene broke me at the same time. It, it was it great, but it broke me. Well, let's pour one out for... Uh... For Ryan James, the, the best side character on this show so far. But even better than Pete and Chloe. Salute yeah. me, Familia. <laughs> to Ryan. To Ryan. But uh, yeah, this was, this was like, it's in my top three of the season so far. But uh, but ratings, uh, Jacob, what you got? I'm going to say it's a nine out of ten. All right. Uh, Matt, what you got? I have to give this thing a ten. This is to me the best out of the three and probably my second, probably my, I don't know. It's probably like my second favorite of the season so far. I mean, I know we're still a little bit along with There's so much more that there's some of the episodes are better than others, but this one really hit me on the heart as many level. Um, did I say, it's a, a total emotional roller coaster. Did ride. I say nine out of 10? Yes, you did. Yeah, you, you said nine. I meant seven out of 10. <laughs> Sorry. I was like, I said, I, I like lineage better. This one I liked, but I said, it's, lineage is eight i thought this one was a seven but yeah that's what i meant sorry i forgot i was like wait a minute did i just say nine i, I made a i made a like a ryan mistake where he was like dr seuss instead of <laughs> oh we didn't we didn't really bring we didn't really brought up the whole lana moving to metropolis the whole aunt now that she's moving to metropolis with aunt now and her like fiance that part we didn't bring we didn't brought that part up yet i was not a fan yeah that was a little that. bit that no. was a little bit pointless like did we really need this yeah it is like like we get it. Like Nell and Lana aren't exactly big fans of each other. Like Kumsi Kumsa. Like, like they don't see eye to eye. They don't see eye to eye to each other. Yeah, exactly. But um, but yeah, I'm going nine uh, nine point five out of ten. I really love this episode. Shout out to uh, Ryan Kelly. He absolutely crushed it. Would go on to do great things. Is still doing great things. 
But uh, yeah, easily the best guest star of this show so far by a whole lot. But uh, let's uh, let's dive into the final episode that we're going to be talking about today. Season 2, Episode 9, called Dichotic. Stay tuned for scenes from next week's all-new Smallville. WB's New Tuesday. A stranger steals the girl of Clark's dreams. Ian's very intense. But two-timing is twice as dangerous. I want you to be careful. Why don't you just admit it? The two girls who used to like you now like me. I think you were jealous. Now both may be lost forever. Hey, girls. How about a double date? Jonathan Taylor Thomas returns to TV on an all-new Smallville. Ian Randall is a mentally unbalanced, overachieving student desperate to succeed who gets a C from his stern shop teacher, John Frankel. Ian freaks out, duplicates himself, and kills Mr. Frankel because that is a perfectly rational response to a C. The meteor rock mutant, the, the, the meteor rock mutant simultaneously invites Lana and Chloe on a literal double date, aiming to get a scholarship from, from Luther Corps to Yale by using the girls who knew who, who know Lex Luther. Meanwhile, Lana moves to Chloe's house to live with her and her and divorced father after Nell leaves town. Clark tries to advise Lana and Chloe about the personality and ability of Ian, but he is misunderstood. Elsewhere, Jonathan breaks his leg and Lex Luther meets Dr. Helen Bryce, who is treating Jonathan where an immediate attraction develops between Lex and Dr. Bryce. So you want to know what Lex does in this episode? He beats up with the car of a meter maid. Hey! Are you crazy? I employ 2,500 people in this town. That's literally... This is nine iron because of a parking iron. ticket. Because the fucking parking dude who's giving out a parking ticket is talking trash to Lex. It's like, oh, I'm starting to enjoy your little tea time. We all got hard work. Ugh. It's like, I'm sorry, do I do something that would offend you? I, I don't, it's so stupid, but it was so great that how Michael Rosemont sold that scene. No, that he just, iron. when he lost his temper, just uses an iron to just to hit the shit out of that, that glass window. Kind of reminds me of that scene in The Big Lebowski where, uh, where, where uh, oh Walter yeah is- yeah when john goodman oh. used that bat and hits that fucking car and then what that happens that was the robert fuck car. a stranger in the ass and like, that's not what happens larry you see what happens larry you see what happens larry. this is what happens when you fuck a stranger in the ass larry <laughs> when you <laughs> fuck someone in the ass <laughs> <laughs> and the other guy it turns out that was the like, other dude's watch. car that was the wrong guy it was like what the fuck are you doing are you out of here <laughs> oh my god he's gonna smash him, and then he smashes jeff Bridges' car it's not even john goodman's car he's like whoa whoa it's not in my car what the fuck are you doing my car <laughs> and he goes nuts and <laughs> hurts him. starts smashing the car like this is what happens <laughs> he just keeps yelling, when you fuck a stranger in the ass. When you fuck ass. a stranger in the ass. <laughs> and just keeps hitting it. He did that car like, man, he's sitting there telling a child that. That's what made me laugh. He's telling a kid that. And he's and still, he, and he stood there. He's not freaking kid's like out this. about it. The kid did this the whole time. Because <laughs> he knows, like, that's not my car. That's not that's not my car, dude. <laughs> First off, the, the rational thing in that would have been, how would a 15-year-old kid be able to buy a freaking car? <laughs> that should When have he been doesn't the, even have a driver's license. That should have been the first red flag that that's not his car. Because John Goodman's unhinged and dumb. <laughs> yeah, but like in this one, okay, like this kid is unrational, okay? The kid's unrational. Jonathan Taylor Thomas is unrational because he gets a C. And I'm like, you know, I, I can understand that. I mean, if my dad was Tim the Toolman Taylor, I would be the same way. I mean, let's let's be fair. The teacher was an asshole in this episode. Like he was very hard on you a could, lot of the students in general. You couldn't have like Clark made an S, and he got mad at Clark for making an S. And, and Pete Ross gets a B plus for sticking to the basics of the candlestick holder. Yeah, and, Did you see and, the S, and, by the way? what? Did you see the S by the way of the Superman symbol S? Oh yeah, I saw some. Oh yeah, that's definitely the the S. Foreshadowing. Symbol for the that's another foreshadowing. Yeah, that is. Even God's going. Do you get it? And the business we call this foreshadowing. 
but uh but yeah like matt or, i'm sorry jacob was talking about the main villain is played by jonathan taylor thomas we all know who he is randy and home improvement <laughs> young simba and the lion king he's been around who also would be ashamed of you dude he let a lot of people down a lot of fam- very famous dads down but you i were think much nicer as a kid <laughs> i th- i think there was a he lot just of wanted to be he just couldn't wait to be king right yeah, he couldn't wait to be a king. That's exactly what he was doing. <laughs> but there is a lot of parallels, I think, between uh, between like this and like Hermione Granger in Prisoner of Azkaban when she has that time wheel device and she attends. Oh yeah, how the, how she was able to get in class simultaneously on the same day, which was yeah. impossible. But then yeah. you know why. But uh, but yeah, when there there was a scene where uh, where um where JTT is like getting like undressed and he's about to like clone himself again, I'm like. Oh my God! Are we gonna see JTT's JPP? <laughs> His little PP. It's Jonathan Taylor PP. <laughs> Come on, guys! JPP. I thought of that all day, and I was—I literally wrote it down. <laughs> wow! I don't get the what's the second P stand for? Let Let's not talk about that. But we're um, not getting we're not going down that rabbit hole. <laughs> But um, I'm just fishing. I'm just fishing for Ryan to say it. That's all. I was just fishing. <laughs> and Ryan didn't bite. <laughs> say it. <laughs> but, but say it. Like you know, like like Two Face from Dark Knight. Say it. <laughs> say it. <laughs> say it. <laughs> but um, penis. Yeah, I I wasn't. I'm not sure how I feel about the whole Lana and Chloe and Clark thing of the whole the like, love triangle drama. Yeah. I I didn't like. I, the no, love I didn't triangle, buy. But... And you're saying I could buy with Chloe wanting to go with. Um, Jonathan Taylor Thomas's character Ian, but with Lana it made no sense. She was always the shy girl, but she still has like more feelings with Clark, waiting for him. But if her to go out with Ian all of a sudden just doesn't seem like that's what Lana would have done. It what? feels very out of character. I didn't like that. The whole thing of like of uh, Jonathan Taylor Thomas dating Clark and dating Lana at the same time. Wait a minute. Yeah. Wait, a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me rephrase that. Hey, Chloe, not Clark. He was not dating Clark. <laughs> he was he was dating Clark. What like, <laughs> yeah, like Clark. Does it, does, I guess I guess Clark's show. got a little dirty little secret that we don't know of. I think his parents have had known all along. And he's like that, that. There's he said. You know what? He's had more guys than he's had women in that barn. So just saying. I mean, <laughs> there's a reason why Clex is a thing. <laughs> but um, but anyway, it was kind of weird seeing that whole thing go down. I just. I wasn't sure how I felt about it. it is like e- either like make the Klana a thing officially or not, or make the 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 Chloe or the the Chloe or uh, the Cloark make the Cloark make the Cloark <laughs> the Cloark a thing or just like don't is like or just or just end this whole stupid love triangle that Clark's that an Chloe asshole still... because he gets jealous that Chloe's happy. I'm like, all right, I'm happy. Like he gets so jealous when Chloe's with anybody. He's like, why is she with th- someone? I'm like, I don't think he really gets jealous necessarily. I just think he just spots a lot of red flag that just doesn't sit right. And then Chloe and Lana just play the whole jealous card. If Pete card, was so dating defense... Chloe, he would be like all defensive about it. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't yeah, with Chloe, think... no, but with Lana, probably. I would buy that more than than Chloe. Oh, if oh, I guarantee you, if, if, if Pete he's more like mom, the overprotective brother for from Chloe, and yeah, he does play a little bit of the jealous card with Lana. Which, by the way, I just never bought that. Like, also, he kills his teacher over a C, which you couldn't go on at bribe him. Say, look, is there anything I can do to make this like you know? Instead of saying, I really need a C, he's I so really desperate, need and there's no, there's like, there's no any way that he can make up for it. Or an extra credit or something. Yeah, he's like, you know, I mean, he's like, no, I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna kill him because he was a dick. I'll come wash your car for you in the weekend or something. Come on, <laughs> At, on school property because that'd be weird if I go to your house. <laughs> that would be strange. I mean, he's got like two clones. He could morph himself. So I mean, obviously, he could sit his ass at home and make his clone to go do it. Oh, he could. <laughs> he could do it. It's Chloe be like, I hate you so much. I hate you. <laughs> I, I just don't understand. Also, I do like that Lex beats the meter maid's car and then has to go to anger management. But then, like, here's what made me mad. All right, so Jonathan gets his foot hurt. And I like that Clark, you know, went and saved him and everything. And then, like, Lex just shows up at the hospital randomly. He's like, oh, I heard. How the hell did you hear about that? 
Like, Rand- yeah. does Lex have, he didn't like, tell anybody about it. Like, how did he know that Jonathan was injured? Does Lex have tabs on Clark? He's like, oh, my. Does oh. he mo- is he monitoring him? Uh, Jonathan can't just get hurt. They went to the hospital. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'm on my way from the Lex mansion. Okay. Jonathan can't. My doctor's on his way home. I'm like, doesn't that make that's, that's so freaking weird? It's like that it's, Lex it's is very that obsessed it, with that family. It, it felt very convenient. He's overstepping his bounds, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. He is overstepping his boundaries. Do you agree, Ryan? Yeah, it is. And I think the whole theme of this episode is all of these characters just being stretched beyond their limits and and showing that you can't be in many places at once. You got to just roll with the punches and take it as it comes. But I feel like it was clumsily delivered, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Like, I feel I the like same that. way. I do like that we're in the same situation with the when they find the dead body and he's like, damn, who's that? Is that the the teacher falls on top of me? That, 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 yeah, that's a little bit of a callback to the other episode of the oh, X-ray God. episode when the, the Tina Greer's mom falls out of the closet when Pete opens it like, oh, damn, what's that? And then a fire gets like started and, and then John Ted Files looks cool, walking slow motion. He's just trying him. to look all menacing. He was trying to look all menacing when he's walking well, by look the at me. flames. I just set the fire. I'm walking by the fire. See how cool I am. Fire, <laughs> I'm Jay Fire Thomas now. <laughs> you know also like then he go clark shows up i might lie i don't care if that's a clone or not i'd beat the shit out of him in front of chloe say you motherfucker you just literally tried to kill me he's like i was here the whole time i swear and i'm like well you're just going out the window <laughs> i was like whoa 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 dude <laughs> whoa, whoa. he would have pulled like a like a freaking uh a, a, a hank from breaking bad like bust down the door and just beat the crap out of jesse yeah, beat the, yeah beat the yeah he beats the crap out of jesse ping was like oh whoa whoa <laughs> I'm like, uh, Chloe would never forgive Clark if he threw that dude out the window. <laughs> no. And also, how did you get from how did you get from this school to my place so quickly if it was like 20 minutes ago? That should not have taken that long for you to get to the school and to get to here. It would have taken a lot longer than 20 minutes. Yeah, it's like, and then also like, also don't does like does he does and they never address this. Do you think the clone feels something? Like for instance, when he's making out with oh, Chloe, when he's feeling it, when he's like making out with Chloe. When he's mm-hmm. feeling it, he's like, mm-hmm. like, because it's like essentially a part of yourself. Okay. So, like, if I slap myself in the face, then my hand's going to feel it. And so is my face. So, essentially, if I'm making out with Chloe, I should be able to feel it. I'm like, this going, what's wrong? Nothing. Mm-hmm. So, in, in a weird way, is he kind of, is he kind of fucking himself? Did you, were you feeling it when I was fucking her? It's just like, ah, oh, ah. Oh. He's just like, oh, like, oh. Well, no, it's all, it's all oh, like a scene in like a. Just imagine, him, just imagine yeah. him laid on his bed, sleeping, while the other self just fucks another chick, and he just voice like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> having his own little wet dream. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> I am going. I am going to have the time of my life editing this. You know, I, <laughs> just like imagine he has nuclear it, diarrhea or, or, like, or, just, <laughs> or just imagine having a tangible orgasm it's like <laughs> oh. <laughs> man, don't touch me on tantric tantric what the fuck is tantric <laughs> it's just man. quite literally like i seen him with Harry Met Sally where he's like yes yeah he's on a date with Lana <laughs> while he's having sex and Chloe goes yes yes this, this is probably going to be the most fun in the most funniest episode on this podcast <laughs> i'm gonna have the time of my life brought to you by sex talk <laughs> yeah, small talk during the sex talk <laughs> sex talk edition small talk after hours if you will but um <laughs> just no, se- no, no sex talk op- sex talk after dark but then that kind of like kind of like defeats that i don't think it would because he would be because he literally fell to his death, one of his clones. So if he fell, his clone falls to the death. But there, did you see the delayed scene in the he DVD died bonus? In that one. Yeah, he, yeah, his clone died. Should have been you down here. And he died with them because they were born all in one. That's not in the final cut of that episode. They left that part out of the cutting room floor. Yeah. I, I can't so I can neither confirm. So the question is, did he survive or did he die? Do you believe that he'll show up in the future episodes? 
I can neither confirm nor deny without the secretary's approval. That's and the one. Insert clip again. I can neither confirm nor deny details of any such operation without the secretary's approval. This was the. But, uh, but I just think that's so. Like, I mean, if he falls, if like, he falls to his death, I'm like, you just. I was just waiting for him to say when he falls to the ground, he goes. I'm like, he just falls to the ground. He's dead. You're just like, holy shit! Like, like holy shit, he's dead. <laughs> Or, you know, like, you know, or it could be like there's a master one, like there's a master, uh, there's a master, there's a master, <laughs> there's a, I'm not trying to be dirty, I said master and started laughing, <laughs> the, the master, Vader, <laughs> the master, the master, there's a, the ma there's like, a, cause, uh, uh, there's a basically like there, how there's a, qu a queen bee and there's always like the, uh, the drones, that's what mm -hmm. it could be, he could be the king. And then there's the basically they're all drones. So when one drone dies, it's also if you don't kill the queen, then he's good. So if he would have the he so if you have to kill the you have to kill the queen and yeah, not kill the kill drone. The original, not the yeah, not the replicas. Because if you throw if you kill the replica, okay, I can still that's not going to do anything. Another one out, I can still shit another one out. So it's fine. It would have been it would have been more painful for him to duplicate more than one. <laughs> it, it feels like he's just taking a big giant diarrhea in a painful way. <laughs> The way that he was doing that whole duplicate transfer transference, it was so painful. It looked like he was just fucking taking a big dump in the painful. <laughs> he's like, ah, he's like, ah. Ah. It's like a scene in Austin Powers where he's like, that's, that's number two. two. What the? That's right, bro. You tell that sir, he's boss. <laughs> just like, also, like, you know, it'd be so funny. Just like, you know, he's just like, hey, Lana, I want to have a threesome. And all of a sudden, you see two of them. He goes, "Yeah, it's not gay if it's myself." <laughs> no, it's not gay. It, it's not gay if he does himself. <laughs> it's like Schwarzenegger. It's like Schwarzenegger from the Sixth Day. No, so you gotta go fuck yourself. <laughs> well, um, taking that to a whole new meaning. When I say go fuck, go screw yourself, I didn't mean to take that literally. <laughs> also, I also also okay. So the, I do like that. Besides the the, the we gotta know off. Jonathan Taylor Thomas, but like <laughs> also like I do like that Lex like that he was an asshole to that doctor, Doctor Helen Bryce, and then like you literally they go to anger management and like they start flirting with each other, but then like I I call bullshit though on her like okay what'd you do? Well I could drop kicked an orderly. I'm like well first off you would be fired for that. You would not be <laughs> you would not be in anger management exactly. You would if be you drop kicked job an if you if you assaulted. Your your employee. That is called assault and battery, and that is a charge. Police does not. Uh, oh well, we're gonna see anger management. <laughs> it's like what? Even our in our Lord year of two thousand and what two or three or two, three two two. two. We're not. That's still like uh. That's still like a fireable offense. That's not like you know. If you literally, I just imagine her being like, "That's it, hiya." But uh, but <laughs> on that note, uh, well. This is definitely the weakest of the three we've covered tonight. I mean, the discussion was by far and away. But the, the Helen Bryce, the actress who played Helen Bryce, is the same actress from Two and a Half Men and Saw Two. Uh huh. That's right. Yeah. Two Saw Two. Also, I have one more thing to add. Okay, so um, it's amazing that Lana and, and Chloe are dating the same guy, and yet they're living together, but yet they never have a conversation. But hey, are you dating anyone? Oh yeah, I am. Oh, what's his name? Ian. What? I'm dating someone named Ian. Oh, really? That's weird. Oh, what's his name? And they say his last name. Like, wait a minute. We're dating the same guy. And then they confront Ian. That, like, literally, it's that Clark has to go up there and tell each one of them, and they don't believe him. I'm like, just go fucking talk to Lana. Just go talk to Lana, Chloe. Or just go in Lana the, uh, go talk to Chloe. In the words of Ron White, you can't fix stupid. It's like, <laughs> that made no sense to me. It's like, if you two were to literally have a conversation, you will literally figure this out yourself, okay? But instead, it's like just like that scene in John Tucker Must Die, where like yeah. they figure out they're dating the same guy by like literally saying his name. <laughs> that literally, that's how I feel like these girls are not as smart as those girls. I mean, these girls figured that out in like the first twenty minutes of the movie. Exactly. <laughs> well, I just um, think that. I th I think on that note we can go to ratings. Uh, Matt, what you got? Or, or I'm sorry, Jacob, what you got? Oh, this is a solid ten out of ten. I'm joking. Uh, this is like a six out of ten. Uh, Matt, what say you? I give it a like. God, man, it's so difficult. I'm probably gonna give it like a six point five out of ten. He's gonna sixty nine. Yep, yeah, sixty nine. There you go. Sixty six point nine. Uh, sixty nine, dude. <laughs> nice, but um, 
I'll go I'll go six out of ten as well. Easily the weakest of the three. Still solid though. I uh, I did enjoy Jonathan Taylor Thomas in this role. Uh, kind of stupidity with the whole cloning thing, but regardless, not bad. But uh, but definitely a step down, but not a bad step down. But uh, overall, three pretty solid episodes on the whole. Definitely the most fun recording session we've done so far for but this. I want, but I wanted to bring up one that one scene in the Ryan episode when Ryan finds out that Pete knows a secret. And it's like, do you know what he's stressed out about? It, and he's worried that he's going to fess up and tell someone. I was like, yeah, there, there's going to be a, like, like he may act cool and all, but he's, but he's still a little bit stressed out that he might like slip up and tell someone about Clark. But I pass it off to all of you watching. What did you think of these three episodes? Let us know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. It, we apologize it, for the mature audience. No, but th these recordings, <laughs> these recordings always, I always look forward to it so much. It just, it, 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 I, I get a little pep in my step every, every. I mean, I mean, we always, we always got to spice it up and try to make it fun and, yeah. and, and, and hilarious. And, and I feel bad for Ryan's uh down video downloader because he's got to download a whole bunch of clips. Yeah, he's probably got to say, "Fuck, here I go." I had to edit some certain things in this. Like, yeah, the the yeah. YouTube downloader needs a restrictor plate. I'm using it so much, but uh, but uh, Jacob Collins, it's a privilege to do this as always. Don't say the hub. Tell the people where they can find you. Don't say the hub. Only fans. No, just... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> forgot, one forgot job. that part. Uh, they one can find me on the X videos. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, uh, they, they can find me on YouTube. No, not in a dirty way. <laughs> uh, they can find me on YouTube, uh, you know, on 3D Movie Cinema. Uh, yeah, I just reviewed... Uh, I just reviewed um, Resident Evil, the video game, the original 1996 game from PlayStation 1. I review that, and then on Friday, which by the time this airs, it'll have been Friday, I've review, reviewed the first Exorcist movie from the 1970s, uh, starring Linda Blair and Ellen Bernstein, uh, and then a, for in honor of Exorcist Believer coming out, and then this weekend, by I will have seen Exorcist Believer, and then the following week, we'll have a review for Exorcist Believer. Yeah. And I got a watch along with you coming up tomorrow night. I wish it would have been Friday by the time this airs. We're doing a movie called Nightbreed. Yeah, that will have already aired on this channel. It will be on this channel. Jacob's channel will be linked in the description. We need to get mad on a live stream. That way we can have the, the, the small talk group. But like, small talk group, we're watching a movie. Hey, like, I'm open. Just say the word. <laughs> yeah, we okay. will definitely make that happen. But uh, Matt, your channel and your link tree is in the description. You've got some horror stuff coming to your channel. I see you've already reviewed the Jack Nelson movie Wolf, as well as the original Blade, which that movie rocks. The original Blade, it's so that good. That movie for a Marvel film, that is the first Marvel film you'll ever see where a guy gets a BJ from a hooker. Because he's literally <laughs> Donald Faison, like through the bloodbath, he's just getting, a, he's kissing a girl with a cowboy hat, he's getting a beat. I'm like, yeah, that's the first Marvel film where I've seen someone get a BJ in that. And I'm like, wow. Well, well it's an R rated movie. They can do anything <laughs> at that time. And you get, also that movie has a porn star in it too, Tracy Lords. Oh really? I yeah. didn't know that. She's literally in the first the first female you see with red hair. Right. She oh. Even grabs a guy's junk and says, "What you got down, a little man?" You know, that's I didn't. He... I did not know that. Yeah. I was not aware of that. <laughs> oh bullshit. <laughs> well, Matt, your link tree is in the description. You've got horror reviews coming up. Anything interesting? Yeah, there's still going to be more to come. I will be putting up my Paranormal Activity, the original, uh, the original Paranormal Activity film. I will be like, I will be seeing Saw X this weekend since now I've watched all the Saw movies, including Spiral, and I'm excited to watch the 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 whole prequel Saw movie that's taking place between the first two, which I'm hearing a lot of great things about it. I can't wait to watch it and review it. And yeah, I did put up with with Wolf, the Jack Nicholson movie, got Blade, and I got and I got the movie, and I got a couple of movies up recently called the creator which right now so far it's gotten up to like much higher view than any video i posted lately which that's awesome <laughs> and i got um yeah the, the another sci-fi horror film that i uploaded called no one will save you so definitely check that out uh, go and subscribe to my channel help me like boost my numbers up with my my subscription i would really appreciate the support and yeah this has been a, a privilege to do another small talk episode especially this one lately we're we got into a lot of the sexual topic on Jonathan Taylor Thomas. 
Yeah, but I do Which, look forward. I do look forward to this every week. And Matt, you will be on a on a stream on this channel, a watch along. The three of us will make will work something out. That is. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm like, hey, I'm open to do a lot more collaboration like, outside of small talk. Just don't hesitate to ask. I'm definitely down for it. And yeah, I still got a lot of other horror films I'm going to be uploading soon with uh, the Blair Witch Project, the original film, which I can't wait to upload that. That's a good film. Yeah, it is. But uh. But like I said, all the links in the description. If you like this video, leave a like, subscribe, click the bell to allow notifications. Scary Mania 4 is happening right now. Daily uploads throughout the entire month of October. So stay tuned to the channel. It's a busy month, but it's a good busy. So stay tuned for all the content coming. For Matt Wyatt, for Jacob Collins, for Truth, for Justice, for the American Way, my name is Ryan Cam. We will see you next week. Y'all take care.